Welcome, welcome, welcome. Okay, so we're going to be looking at um, how to create um, templates on Alveo, and um, it will really make your life, um, typically it'll make your life a whole lot easier, because uh, you won't have to continually make um, the templates or kind of redo them, or, you know, you'll just be able to have everything saved, and um, we'll kind of see why it would be and it, it would be an advantage um, going forward. Okay, so let's start looking at where we'll just start looking at building some uh, our, um, templates here and how we would do that. And so I just got some kind of random chart pulled up. Any doesn't matter what currency; it's all going to be the same um, as far as building templates and you know whatnot, et cetera, et cetera. So. Um, let's let's um, start going in this. So let's say that you know we've got we've got everything set up, or we're, we're presuming. I'm presuming anyway that we have everything set up to this point. And um, just out of you know, just in case somebody doesn't know, if you want to put a new chart on there, you just simply go there. This is the icon for a new chart. So you'd click on that, and then you can go down. And you can put any chart that you see fit, that you like. So, I don't know, everybody seems to like the Euro dollar. I like it too, so I'm not trying to imply that I don't. Um, so this is a good one. Um, so we've got the Euro dollar up, and, and we have the uh, pound JPY. And okay, it doesn't matter the time frame that we have it in. It will, whatever our template, that we put on there, it'll all be the same. It's all bars on a chart. It won't matter what the time frame is. Okay, so um, let's say that the reason that we would want to uh, put a, a or create a template is so that I don't have to create it here on the euro dollar and then go over here and then recreate it on maybe this pound JPY. Okay, because that just sounds like um, that just sounds like a not not a whole lot of fun, right? So, well, I mean, I don't know, but anyway, it's just more work for us. So it's it's easier to just create it one time and then be able to boom going forward, just kind of be able to put it on whatever chart that we want. Okay. So um, when we're talking about templates, usually we're talking about indicators, right? We want to be able to put the kind of indicators that we want on the chart. Okay, so uh, let's say right here. So we're going to go indicators right here. Where here's the little icon um, for indicators, and then we can put any of these things on that we like or that we want to put on. So da, 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 we've got all of this. We've got we could we could put anything on that we that we saw fit. Um, everybody, I think, well, I mean, I like stochastic. I think most people like stochastic. Um, doesn't really matter. I'm not, will this not be very, we'll be very nonspecific about what we're doing here. So let's put stochastic on first, okay? So right here, we've got the one minute chart up and we, man, we just go, okay, stochastic. I love stochastic. Let's just, let's just put it on. This is great. Okay, so we start going um, in that direction right there. So stochastic is on there. And then let's say that we go, you know, stochastic. I, I like stochastic, but uh, man, let's have two oscillators on there. Let's go CCI and um, maybe we have, you know, yeah, let's just put CCI on there. Okay. And then maybe. Okay, maybe just maybe here. As far as our CCI goes, um, when we when we put it on there, I notice, man, stochastic has these levels on there, and I really like those. But CCI, um, for whatever reason, it, 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 they're not programmed on there right now. Okay, so let's do that. So we can go into our indicators list by right clicking. We go down to indicators, and then I go into CCI, and then right here you will see this little kind of little thing here called levels right there. We get this little drop down menu and there is nothing there. What the heck is that about? Well, we got to add 
those levels. So we click add and then it asks for a value. So for CCI, a very common value is going to be 100 and negative 100. And I personally, this is just my own preference, but I like negative 120. And then I also like um, positive 120. And then I also like um, zero. Okay, so we would have three of these different values um, going forward. All three of them will have that. Boom, boom, boom. So we go like that. And then now all of those um, levels, if we wanted any of those in there, those are going to be now populated in there. And I don't have to do it again. Um, so once I get those in there, the one time I can create a template based around this and you know, I can get them in there and hey, that's that's great and awesome and, and everything's looking good. Um, so I'm just kind of throwing out some, you know, some ideas. Some ideas here of, of things that you things that you can do. OK. Um, OK, so let's keep let's keep going here. So here we go. Ba, 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 ba. Ba, ba. Maybe we want a. Maybe I maybe I'm like you know what I would love a linear weighted moving average in there that is what I find to be you know the best possible thing and I really want some specialty things on there so instead of being calculated price upon the close I want it to be price weighted you know maybe I've got some very particular things on there so this would enable me to not have to change this every single time Okay, so now I've got, you know, maybe I, I need, I want a special period on there. Okay, so let's do, we'll go seven on there. And then also I've got some other criteria that I like. So let's thicken that up. So the standard default on that is going to be a one on the width. And maybe I want to see it a little bit better. So I go, boom, let's make that a three. Okay, and then I can... Now I've got that setting and I don't I won't have to mess with it anymore and I can just go yeah man I just I just love that I love how this um, linear weighted moving average moves like right along the top but maybe you don't doesn't matter it's not the point the point is is that you can customize things and then you don't have to get them switched around again you know you can just kind of hey you can you can put you can put those on there okay you can put any of those things on there and then boom, there we go. Okay. Okay. So moving, moving right along here. Now let's see if there's some other things that we might want to put in there. Maybe, um, maybe I want something else in here just for fun. Who knows? We're just kind of throwing some stuff together here. So this is really, it's, it's by your design. It's not by my design. I'm just kind of showing you, you know, some stuff to put on there. This really isn't an indicators class. This is just simply, um, quite simply put, all this is is just how to make templates. Okay, so how to make templates. Um, maybe we can put a Bollinger Band on there, and maybe we would like that. Maybe we're like, you know what? This is like a two on standard deviation, and I really want a four on there, and then I also want price based upon the the open instead of that and um, I want to double that right there and um, I'm just kind of throwing out some things that making it more custom so that the more custom kind of stuff that you have on here the more you're not going to want to have to put it on every single chart right you're just going to want to say hey I just want to put it on you know one you know I want to put it on on here like one time I don't want to mess with it anymore which is just kind of what I'm what I'm showing you here. So like that. So maybe it just maybe it just kind of goes like that and maybe that's you know the way that we like to do things. Maybe this is it. Okay. So um, we've got that we've got that kind of set up and and I'm saying to myself, all right, um, yep, I like I like the way that everything looks there. And um, you know what? Maybe I don't. Maybe I'm like, okay, let's go down to indicators. Let's crack. All that you're doing, 
by the way, when so when I go into this, when I right click and I get this populated and I go into indicators again, although this looks, um, we've got the same icon because it's an indicator, the difference is that this is actually a list of indicators that you can put on while this is actually a list of indicators that you actually have on. So here's kind of a for instance. So this will say my indicators list. So this lists every single indicator that I have currently on my chart right now. Okay, and that's, that's about it. That's the only difference there. But if you want to make any changes, so let's say that I want to make a change to CCI, okay, then I would actually, here's my indicators list, and I would go into CCI in order to access that and be able to make those changes. Um, we can do any a number of things here. Maybe, maybe I'm like, you know what, um, bah, bah, bah. here's the actual, so the first one here, it's going to denote kind of what it is. So this one is going to say, hey, um, here's my items list right here, and my the name of it, this is the CCI, and it's the 10 period. If I go down here, this will say, this is my level, this is my level 2, this is going to be my level 3, and so on and so forth. So I actually have to click on the item that I want to change in order to make that change. So let's say that I maybe I want to thicken up that line on CCI, and I'm like, you know, I just want to... I would like some 4K HD on that one, and let's see what that, oh man, that really brightens it up, and I can see it better, um, and I like that, you know, I like that a lot better, so on and so forth, and so that would be kind of another little custom feature that you could, that you could do, or could, you know, could put in as well, okay, um, let's see here. So here we go. Maybe we go, you know what, the levels. Um, I like the levels. Everything is good there, but let's go. We want to go level color. So maybe the level color, I'm like, man, that thing is bugging. And I want to use like fuchsia. That's like more what I like right there and <laughs> just throwing that out. Obviously that is not what I like, but let's say that it is. And um, let's say that it is. And I'm just like, yeah, now I want to be able to differentiate between, you know, CCI and stochastic and the these these colors and et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So let's say that now I have something that I like. So let's for just humor me here. Let's say that, man, this is the template. This is exactly how I want it to go. And this is exactly, this is exactly the way that I like it. Everything is all dialed in. Um, and here we go. So now let's create a template. So what we would do is we're going to right click on our screen and we're going to go down here to save template. Okay. We go down here to save template. Here's all of these Here's all of these templates that I've created at some time, probably some of them for this class and just kind of, you know, screwing around and, you know, doing some different, you know, stuff, things like that. And I go, this template we will call um, CCI, whatever, CCI, CCI Stow for stochastic. And then, and then I click save right there. Okay. Now the advantage is, is that any, anything that I have on here going forward, for instance, I flipped over here to the pound JPY, and now I can go load template. So I'm gonna right click on my screen, I'm gonna go down to load template, and now all I have to do is I can go CCI stochastic, and I can click open, and boom, um, all of those custom things that I did, I don't have to do it I don't have to do it here. It's already done. It's it's already done. So now I can just go, okay, yeah, great. Um, this is exactly how I like it and exactly what I want to do. And so, boom, let's say that I want, you know, Frank JPY, and I go new chart, and I would have to go through and recreate one by one all of those things that we already put in. But instead, 
Now I don't have to do that. I can go down to load template and go up to CCI stochastic and then I can pop that on there and then that's how it will appear. Um, so anything that you want to do, any kind of customizations that you want to make, you know, colors or, you know, specific indicators or thicknesses or, you know, you, you kind of, you're, you're, you're only limited by your imagination, um, you will be able to put in your, in your template, okay? And then, boom, that's how, that's how you make a template as far as Alveo is concerned. And then you'll just continue, you know, as many indicators or things that you want on there. I will tell you this, um, uh, just kind of for, uh, from, from my experience, okay, from my experience, here is, here is something that will kind of shoot yourself in the foot. So the more indicators that you have on here, and I'm not saying that you can't have a, a decent amount, but the more indicators that you have on here, and the more candles that you have on, and the more currencies that you have on, it's all kind of a, it's all a multiplier on how, you know, things are running on your computer. So if you don't have a fast computer, and you don't have a, you know, and it's, there's so many variables to that. So it is, hey, bandwidth, how fast is the data coming through? How fast is your router? How, I mean, there's all these things that will compile up. And so if you have a million different things on there and you're not really using them, it's just going to slow down um, the way that the data pushes through. So um, I, I want to be, I don't want to have anything on there that is not efficient. You know what I mean? I just want, I, I want to have um, things on there that I'm actually using. And, you know, if I'm not using it, then, you know, if I'm like, hey, you know, eh, that wasn't such a good idea. I, I'm not really using that, and I just have it on there. Um, a lot of times I will find that, you know, people are just like, oh, and I got, you know, this HMA on here, and I got these pivots on here, and I got these things on here, and then, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And then, um, you know, we kind of look at their trades, and I'm like, okay, well, it doesn't look like you're using any of those things, to be honest, because you're not taking any trades based on those things. So what do you have them up there for? I don't know. I just, blah, blah. you know, there's kind of a comfort in, I think, having it up there, even though you may not be using it. So, you know, if you're not using it, it's not really an effective tool for you, or maybe you're just not effectively applying it to, to the application, you know, that you would want to use it for. So anyway, okay. So, um, no. So somebody just said when, sorry, I just, I just happened to look over, ting, and it said when the spread changes, does this give us a clue as to the change of direction? And the answer is um, no, absolutely not. Has nothing to do, um, the spread changing has nothing to do with um, change of direction at all. Um, the spread, not that I want to get into this too much, it, the spread is is all based on an algorithm that uh, the liquidity provider has, and if they if it meets certain metrics, it could be you know who knows what they're you know honestly who knows what those metrics are completely, but I can tell you um, you know volatility is a metric that they have in there. Time of day is going to be a metric or lack of volume is going to be a metric that they use or, or increased um, volatility that, you know, all of those things are going to be things that will trigger um, spread spikes and stuff like that. And that's generally um, probably why you would be perceiving um, a, an increase in spread as a, as an possible change of direction when really um, you're just, usually seeing an increase in volume, um, but you can be seeing a decrease too. Like for instance, off hours or off times in the market when, when most markets are closed, you'll see an increase of spread just like, you know, Sundays are pretty, you know, notorious. The volume is really low. You will see pretty big spreads on um, Sundays and also um, kind of ramping up times like when New York closes and you're kind of getting a gap 
um, right in there. You might see some pretty, you know, bigger size spreads and stuff like that. But yeah, we don't have anything to do with we don't have anything to do with that, and there's not really a way to gauge when the spreads are going to spike or other than I can tell you, you know, those kind of likely times, you know, news events and, and um, you know, off hours. Those are the kinds of things that you'll look for. The spread will get worse. So the more exotic the pair, um, the worse usually the spread is going to be. And, you know, it just kind of, you know, some of the, some of the pairs that are notorious we have actually um, gotten rid of because the spreads can be so brutal. Um, you know, I've seen spreads. I've actually seen spreads on this one. Um, cross pairs of the Australian dollar and, and exotic cross pairs of the New Zealand dollar and of the JPY. Those are kind of more notorious for getting some big, some big spreads. So, for instance, I have been in trades. Um, it's been quite a while ago, but on the New Zealand dollar, where you know I got into the I got into the trade. It was on a news event. I got into the trade. It was like probably like a two point something pip spread. And while I was in the trade, it gapped up to like thirty pips, and I couldn't get out of the trade because even though I was up and winning in the trade, um, couldn't get out of the trade. Um, could not get out of the trade because for you know for that reason because I, the spread was so big so I had to wait for it to like kind of like go down and and uh, go down and then I could get out of the trade but there's some precarious moments in you know some types of news events and things like that and it's just something that you spread is something that you just don't have any control over so try to you know try to stick to you know majors. Um, this actually did happen on a major, and that was just kind of one of those weird things. But the weirder the kind of cross pairs that you're trading, if you're trading like a lot of, I don't know why, but everybody thinks, you know, there's this kind of that weird thing where you're like, yeah, the more, it's like this rare gem. So if I trade like the New Zealand franc, for instance, um, it, you know, because it's like this weird pair, I'm going to get, you know, this better price action. And sometimes the pips are more valuable on, on the more exotic pairs, and it's a double-edged sword, though, because you're going to get, you know, bigger spread, you know, more, usually more volatility and, and uh, more kind of fluctuations in price level and things like that. So for me, I just kind of stay away from, I really do just kind of stay away from all the exotics. I don't know. I just don't, I don't really mess around with it. Okay, so... Do, 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 do. Let me look through here really quickly and see if there's some other questions I can answer. Okay, so yeah, that, um, so SR underscore Johnson. So he says, um, I got triggered into a buy stop by 20 pips um, price after maintenance yesterday. And so um, really they try to time the, the maintenance for, you know, closing of New York. So that would be a low volume time. And in a very low volume time, in a very low volume time, you will see some of those spread spikes. And, um, what pair was that on? If it's kind of an exotic pair, um, pound JPY can kind of be exotic, pound Aussie, um, hmm, pound dollar, huh? Uh, that would definitely be unusual. I would say that. Um, I think recently I've seen the pound dollar get up to like five, which was, you know, I thought was quite high and unusually, you know, unusually so. Um, but yeah, 20, I don't know. Um, hmm, okay. Some of the, yeah, some of the more things that I, I guess I would say commonly you, you might see that on would be like maybe pound Aussie or pound JPY. And uh, yeah, those can be a, definitely unwelcome when you get in, um, when you get trapped in there on some, you know, spread spikes and things like that. That's not very fun. Um, you can also get knocked out on spread spikes and, you know, triggered in. And so there's all sorts of things like that. So um, just, you know, try to be careful about trading, trading those, especially during kind of, you know those off those off hours. Um, the Asian market is kind of a strange little phenomenon. So you got 
you've got Tokyo and you've got Sydney and um, they might say, hey, we're open for business and we're going, but it's not a market like New York and it's not a market um, like London where the open of those markets, it's like, hey, we are ready to go. Things are going good for whatever reason. Um, the banks, so the market, op the Forex market opens, um, but the banks don't open until like a couple hours after the market opens. So you see like a really low volume leading up to that time. And, and so it can be, you know, it can kind of tricky. You're like, oh, hey, yeah, this thing just popped open. Um, but for specifically those two markets, you usually don't see good things happen until like a couple hours later, unless there's a news event. Okay, so BSTRO3 says, hey, Brian, I've used this as exotic pairs to diversify. If I have a euro dollar trade on, my thought is to diversify by picking a trade with a completely different pair. doesn't include either one of these. Um, otherwise, I might unknowingly lose more dollars than I thought if the euro dollar dollar goes south. Um, so how can I... How can I how can I answer this? Um, okay, that's a pretty good that's a pretty good answer. So old dreamer, old dreamer says that you might also try inverse pairs. So what I would say is that trying to diversify based on non-correlated pairs doesn't ring true to me, and it doesn't make any sense. Um, it just is. You know, the logic is not, I guess I would say, sound on that one. So in an inverse, having inverse pairs, those, those, um, that, that logic is sound. Um, the caveat to that is, is, is let's say, and this is something that I see all the time. So let's say that, um, you know, you get into a trade, um, you get into a trade on the euro dollar and you're like, I'm going to automatically you know, be looking for, uh, maybe I get into a buy on the euro dollar and I'm going to be looking for a sell on the um, dollar JPY okay, or the dollar franc. Let's say that both of those are usually in, have an inverse correlation um, to the euro dollar. Now, it, what if, here, here would be the only caveat to that, and that I would say it's sound logic up into the point that you have a sound trade that is going well. But if you know if this one is losing and you have the inverse trade on the other one, then the other one's probably losing too. And now you're you know you're kind of got like the double whammy. If if both of them are going in the same direction and both of them are going well, more power to you. That would be the only um, kind of cautionary tale that I guess I would I would relate. But other than that, yeah, that's that's sound logic. If you, you know, if you've got if you've got correlated pairs or inversely correlated pairs, um, that that works well too. Okay, let's see. Hey Brian, where are the edit global variables tab? Where are the edit global variables tab to set the default quantity, default take profits and stop loss? Okay, so. Um, and I guess we could, you know, you could make an argument that that's part of, you know, setting up the template and things like that. So uh, right up here in your code in this upper left hand corner where it kind of has like greater than, less than, um, you want to click on that. Okay. And we want to go down to, 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 to variables. Okay. We want to go down to variables. Okay. Now we're gonna we can click on variables right there, and this well, yeah this brings up edit global variables, um, and what it will look like um, when you see it is it's going to look like dun, dun, dun. well I would need to let me remove that and I would remove that and I would remove that and so it'll look like this and and there would be nothing there. Okay. Um, here's how you would add those variables in, um, just so that you, this would, you know, goes along with making a template. This would be a template for your, you know, order entry, your stop loss and your take profit. So you're going to click on add and right there, it will say variable underscore one. And so you would highlight that you're going to delete that. 
And just as it appears right here in the middle, so lowercase right there, default underscore quantity. Okay, so I got that in there and let's say, hey, I wanna do a micro lot right there. And then I go add right there and then I double click on that. And then the next one I can go default underscore. Let's go take profit. Oh, I think I put in talk profit. Make sure that you spell it correctly um, because if you misspell it, it won't populate it because this simply won't know what you're asking it to do. And it's not going to like that very much and then you're not going to like that. So make sure it's spelled correctly just as it appears right here. And then we would go like this and we would go, you know, same thing, default underscore stop loss and there we go and then I would you know put all of those things back in there just the way that I like them right there and then I would click on save um, if you if you want to enable this the trailing stop you're going to have to put in enable underscore trailing stop but in the value it has to be a one so you have to put in one and that doesn't mean your trailing stop will be at a one it just means that enables the trailing stop and your trailing stop is actually relative to what your stop loss is right there okay and then i would save that and then that's we're good to go we are good to go right there um how do you set the orders list at the bottom of the screen? Yeah, so same thing. Um, or, you know, similar thing anyway. Dun, 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 dun. Where is it? Orders, 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 orders. Let me get to my... Why in the heck? There we go. So here's the, here's the orders tab up here. Okay. So all that you're going to do is you can, oh, there we go, pop it right there. Okay, so basically right here, um, when I put this right there, um, I can move it down to whatever I want. And you can see this little icon that comes up right here. It's kind of like a plus sign. It just shows the quadrants of the you know different things right there. So if I go to this lower quadrant right here, pop and then I'll pop it right there. Um, the problem with this one is that I need to get rid of this watch list right here. And here's why, because I want it to take up this portion and then I've got this perforation down there and then I can pull that down. And then if I want my watch list back in there, I'm still like even there we go, watch list. Um, some of the newer icons I'm still like going, yeah, where did they, where'd they put that? Okay, yep, right there. Okay, and then pull that over and then there's my you know, back basically like I had it. And then if I want this pulled down and then for me, I can go, I can go load list and then I can go watch list I can pop that in there, right there, and so now I've got my watch list back up, and I've got my orders down here, and so that's how you that's how you put that up. Um, there is tons and tons and tons of videos on doing all of these things. Um, all of this stuff, there there really is. There's there's tons of videos on doing all of this stuff. So, um, you know, you can. Definitely go through and watch the watch the videos. There's um, there's a library literally full of of all of these things. So you can just go to the library and and um, you should be able to search that by topic, and you'll be able to see all of those things in there. Okay. So it is. Okay, all right, so um, no. So trail stop two, that is a no. So you have to you have to have it on a one. 
Um, you have to have it on a 1 to be enabled. It won't work on a 2. Um, it all depends on what your stop loss is. So it is a dynamic trailing stop. And what that means is, is that it just is kind of kind of ratchet in. So it goes like one direction. So as this trade goes this way, so let's say, for instance, dun, 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 as this trade goes up and your trailing stop is back here, it will go do, 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 and it will start coming in. Okay, and then it will stay there when the trade going is going against you. It will just stay in place and not move, and it will just stay there. And as the trade goes up again, da, 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 da. so it gets tighter and tighter as the trade develops. Um, this is a good thing and it's a bad thing. In a fast-moving market, it's going to be a good thing because it will, you know, capture those pips very quickly. Go in this direction. If you have a lot of ebb and flow like this, um, you might go up and it might come back down and it gets tighter and it might stop you out at the low and you're going, what the heck? Um, and that is the caveat. So I don't personally use the trailing stop. Um, that's just how it is. There are, there are, there's a time and a place for it, but depending on kind of the price action that you're seeing, um, the most effective tool is you, honestly. In a really fast moving market with really big bars though, um, it's gonna do a really good job for you. If you just have a lot of kind of wavy markets and stuff like that, then you're not gonna like it very much because you're gonna, it will go up and then come back and stop you out and, and you won't be very happy. That's what that'll look like, okay? Um, this linear weighted moving average, trust me, is nothing special. Um, on this right here, it is a seven. Um, it's a seven linear weighted moving average, and I can't remember, I think I did it, um, I did the price weighted, so I just kind of did some random things on there. There's nothing special necessarily to it per se, but if you see something that you like, um, yeah, so you can kind of mess around with that. But it is a, it's a linear weighted moving average, and it is a seven on there, and then price is weighted instead of calculating price upon the close. So if you wanted to put in price calculated upon the close, it would look like that. And that will follow the ebb and flow um, a heck of a lot closer. And there you go there. But, you know, definitely things will change as, you know, depending on how the it will calculate it upon the candle close. Okay. So that is how you make templates and why it will make your life um, easier um, you know if you're if you got a bunch of custom stuff in there it's going to make it a lot easier for you and, and you're gonna like that a lot better because you won't have to you know do it multiple times and you'll have everything the way that you like it and uh, yep so anyway kind of check that out and we'll kind of wrap this up but anyway that's uh that's how you that's how you want to do it and um, you can also once you get everything configured the way that you like it let me just mention this you get everything all of this thing that means the you know watch list over here and the orders um, down here and everything the way that you want it um, you can then also save you can save this workspace and by saving the workspace that is everything will reproduce just like it just like you have it right here so you can save your workspace and load your workspace and then you won't have to do any of this stuff again either it will just go pop right back up on there just the way that you've configured it and you won't have to do that again okay okay you guys have a good day and i'll see you next week take care